Pugnacia. One of Ark's most fun overhaul mods out there. Dubstep penguins, dripped out argies, and a massive hippo overlord for the final boss. I have 100 days to beat it, but if that wasn't hard enough, there are other goals I need to complete that will reveal themselves as the days go on. This epic journey started as I awoke with a strange green tint to my itchy arm and a carcanus already trying to hunt me down. After I got away, I punched a tree, grabbed berries off a bush, and whacked a rock with a pick. When I came across an aspiring artist, Jaboa, who I rightfully named Zany Zebra, murdered a dodo for its meat and hide, then tamed a yellow lystro that was named Lemon Snack before choosing to go to war with the charred dodo. I tried to help but that did not go well, and then Lemon Snack was unfortunately defeated in battle before I was able to get back to save him. I was going to save my stuff but then another dodo decided I am not allowed to do so, and then I finally got back to find Zany had perished. I suppose that does explain why his video is taking so long. I started day 2 by lying down on this turtle until a compi decided to ruin it so I had to run away. I almost died to this dang pego but thankfully Ebola saved me. I know right, I need to make these things more often. I started making myself a little starter hut before I tamed myself this prodigious Shanhorn, who I named Grover. I wonder if he'll survive till the end of the video. Probably not, but let's see anyway. Then in the morning I was checking out the super speedy Rex who fortunately could not get to me on my rock and then I saw some raptors nearby that I thought would be an amazing early game tame. So I managed to lure one away, bowl it and began pelting it with stones to the face. It did not like that. So a bowler wasn't going to work. I began to build a simple box trap with some door frames, aggroed the raptor only to have it run over and straight through the trap. Twice. So I filled in all the doorways with doors, practiced the jump, and I was now ready. Aggroed the raptor and bowled it to line it up better, ran straight up and into the trap as the raptor jumped straight over the entire thing. And then day 4 started with the classic cooking pot spam in order to gain experience when I hit level 20 and I was able to passive feed this bright pink trike only to have a rex decide that he was hungry and ate my trike. I then used the rest of the day to close up the rest of my base. After that was complete, don't mind the fact there was no roof, I came across this burning dode and I thought sure, let's tame it. So I led it into my trap and began pelting it and pelting it and pelting it with even more rocks. Ah, finally knocked out. I did it! On day 5 I started taming a Fiomia that was dropping these absolutely massive loads so I named it Poopy Machine. My dode tamed up and I named him the Magmasaur from Wish. I wanted to tame this Pteranodon, so using my bowler and slingshot, I began pelting it with rocks, but it broke free and just flew away. This has not been a great start so far, and this is actually really bad, as my first challenge, I need to place an ascension portal before day 25. An ascension portal will cause bosses to start spawning all across the map. If I am unable to do this, my entire playthrough will start from scratch. So I need to find a carnivore that can fight off ancients with 3 million health, and I need one fast. I found another terror that I tried to trap in a cage, but missed completely when a pego decided I was its next target. So I just dropped the cage on it and left it there. Found a new purple terror that I plopped a cage on and began pelting with rocks. It kept moving around so I made myself a club and began whacking it across the head. I'll admit, I am just as surprised as you are that that worked. I started killing the shanhorn for its meat, except it wouldn't stand still and almost drowned me. So I trapped it in a cage and killed it from the inside. The terror tamed up and I named her Bubblegum. Day 6 started by me trying to tame a giant rideable Glotel, but yet another Rex showed up and made my decision for me when he killed me on the Pride Rock. So I used Grover to kill some vultures and a terror bird before I found a giant Lystro that I was able to simply feed some berries, name Lystro Hawk and backflip my way to huge overspawns of trikes. This seems to happen every time I play Pugnacia, so I'll just disable their spawns. But for now I took advantage by passive taming a bunch of trikes, though it did end up feeling more like a mosh pit. I continued taming trikes in day 7 when a dang raptor aggroed the trikes and I got caught in the cross horns. I died twice trying to get back and found all my tames had decided to fight the trikes, and I lost my new trikes and Lastro Hawk. So I finished taming up one final trike, 
saddled it up, and got out of there. Only to accidentally hit a dime off and get killed off the back of the truck. That's what, death eight in the first week? And people wonder why I don't do hardcore. Actually make that nine deaths. If this video gets 50,000 likes, I'll try the top commented mod pack on hardcore for at least 100 deaths. I spent the rest of the day harvesting stone with my truck. Weird, right? But in Pugnacia, even the vanilla creatures are all changed. When the server started to restart, and a Dynonicus took full advantage. I logged in on day 8 after I found I had lost all my tames when I was offline from the restart, set up some forges and then came across a Magmasaur egg that I freely yoinked, yoinked and stored in my base. I wanted a new trike as they are in fact fantastic starter tames, so I headed off to the trike mountains and tamed this awesome green one, cause green is clearly the best colour. I tamed 4 trikes in total as I thought this would be good enough to fight off most dangers early on, only to get ambushed by a raptor as my trike stood and watched me die. Thanks guys. I got back to my stuff with no issues, saddled up the remaining trikes and decided I should be able to take this rex, right? Right? Wrong. That rex ripped through all four of my trikes. Well, it was day nine after I had a new trike again and I named this one Tracy because I was adamant I was going to survive. I saddled Tracy, used her to kill some raptors and gathered a ton of stone to make a trap as I wanted a Kano. Built a basic 9x9 trap, led in the Kano, made a crossbow and some strong trank arrows and began shooting the Kano. I got it down, stuffed my meat into it, including some prime from a dead rex with no clue what actually killed it, and then tranked out a new terror as well. Then I made myself some scissors to give myself the appropriate hairstyle before naming the Kano Carl in remembrance from the 100 days of hunted. Day 10 started off as I flew off in search of crystal. I found some on a snowy mountain but my stone pick was useless and gave me zero. So I flew back on the speedy terror as creatures in Pugnacia have insanely boosted speed for some reason. And easily got some crystal with the shiny new metal pick. Made an awesome spyglass to see the rex harassing me was a level 728. I led it into the trap as it walked straight up and over the trap killing Carl and Tracy. So I tried again, and this time it got stuck. Great. Shot some arrows to begin tranking it out, but ran out to pull out my slingshot as the rex pulled itself out the trap and munched me yet again. So I knew I'd need more narco berries. Tamed yet another new trike, harvested a bunch more berries when someone jumped over my rex aggroing it. So it stepped out of the trap, as yes, I record these 100 days videos on a server that you can play on with your friends. For the first few days of every server it is Patreon only, and then it becomes public, so you can join my discord using the link in the video description and come play on the server with the exact same rates I used. The rex finally managed to kill my trike as it aggroed onto, but I was able to use my terra to lead it back into the trap again. And then I renamed my terra to speed, made some more tranks, and then on finally on day 11 I had the rex down and sleeping. Shoved some meat into it and it flew off to the snow where I used a club. See you guys, I do know how they work, and clubbed some baby penguins to death for their polymer. Shoved the prime into the wrecks and came across this cool waterfall where I decided I'd build my base. Placed down some foundations, tamed even more trucks to gather more stone, and then left them there to guard the area, and got back to find my wrecks was awake. So I balled him up and it picked up everything to move to the new base location, which is hopefully safer. Then as the sun rose for day 12, I hopped on my terror picked up Grover and flew to the new base to find I already had a neighbor before I'd even moved in. I spent the rest of the day harvesting stones, bushes and trees, then planning out my foundations, but I ran out of wood. So I went off in search of an elephant, but I did not find one I could easily tame. Day 13, there was this level 812 Conflagrant Spino that I was able to trank out as well as a Barry because I didn't want to get stunned in the water. I also tranked a conflagrant dodo as these burnt dodos actually poop gasoline. I also tranked a glacial carbon emiss that can double as a fridge. Then on day 14 my spino awakened and I named it Spicy Saurus. I saddled her up and went to battle, killing Picayune Titanosaurs, clearing out the trike overspawn and taking out the spinos nearby. I came across another conflagrant spino, tranked it out, fed it some prime and left it to tame up. 
I even used the spicy saurus to kill a primal truck, which is a truck with cannons on its head for whatever reason. Safe to say, I was feeling powerful. When I ran through the massive truck herd killing everything, not just the men. What, what are you doing? You've made this joke before. Anyways, after that massacre, I got back to base, bred up my spinos and decided I don't need to wait. So I placed the ascension portal opening the world for deadly bosses to start spawning. But in doing so, broke open a rift, releasing more bosses into this world than I expected. Including the world serpent, Jormungandar, that I will also now have to be able to kill before the end of day 100. As the day was ending, I came across another spicy dode that was knocked out so I gave it some berries. I started day 15 by coming across an elephant that I started to feed when a drive-by raptor took me out. So I wasn't taking any more risks. Grabbed my spino and then chose to trank out the elephant instead. Fed it some berries and then tranked out another elephant nearby. The first elephant tamed up and I named it Elephantism. Picked up the dode and the other elephant when I came across a giant turkey. It chose to shoot missiles at me. I chose to run and thankfully was able to outrun the homing death projectiles before spending some time harvesting wood with my elephant to end off the day. With the sun rising to signal day 16, I kept placing foundations as I had a pretty cool base idea for this video. I was going to have a main center control point with a bridge on either side leading to it. So I built a basic structure out of stone as I plan to redo this later using the CKFR mod, but for now this would have to do. It was day 18 after I finished building, I spent parts of the day harvesting a ton of bushes for narco berries when this level 812 adolescent spino was running around. So I was able to trank that out after it got stuck on the trees and then made myself some flak armor before having a cute little photo shoot with Grover for that goatstagram. I started day 19 by filling in the ceiling of my box, setting up a fabricator and then moving in with all my stuff, things and dinos setting up forges, troughs, and even my glacial carbo as an icebox. And then the morning of day 20, I started with another metal grind as I needed more ingots before making use of my forges to hatch some of my spino's eggs, before becoming a chemist to create a ton of drugs when a tumultuous rex attacked. A rex was able to shoot out lightning blasts, destroying all my armor. I jumped to my spino, but I was too late as three of my babies were all killed by the rex. At least one survived. And then I started day 21 with wanting more narco berries as I would need to tame a primal soon. Because my next goal, I have to kill a pugnacia boss before day 50. So with only 30 days to go, I would have to speed things up. So I figured the best way for that is to get myself a Bronto. So using speed and my crossbow, after it was down and eating, I also drank myself a jug bug for oil. And once I got home, I saddled the Bronto and got to work gathering dozens of bushes at a time. Setting up an industrial grill to cook up hundreds of meat. Day 22 started and I wanted to kill an ancient. A mini boss that has 3 million health. And will allow me to get golden kibble which has the power to instant tame any creature below primeval tier. So I made myself some health potions and went off in search of an ancient rex. I found one nearby and went to town, making sure to attack, backing away continuously before eventually managing to kill it. Golden kibble acquired before heading off to the desert where I stole a few wyvern eggs to be hatched tomorrow. So once I got home on day 23, I needed to set up a generator and some air cons, but I never had enough electronics or silica pearls. So to get more, I went off in search of some tech dinos or trilobites to murder. I found a prodigious trilo, which gave me hopefully just enough silica pearls, set up my jenny and air cons to begin hatching the wyvern eggs. With all of them incubating, I set up a soul terminal to automatically pick up the babies. I came across a crab the next day that was knocked out, so I decided, why not? Why shouldn't I have it? Tamed it up as I was in the swamp looking for snails to get cementing paste. Came across two of them, knocked them out, shot some arrows into their face, gave them my cake, and then named one Sarah Snail, and just picked up the other one. I needed more metal, so I went off to the snow as a reaper showed up. 
I whistled my spino to come save me, but I knew if I left him to fight on his own, he would lose. So I jumped off my elephant, sprinted to the spino, and immediately popped a health potion to heal us all up. There was a Megapithecus nearby that I was able to take out, and I now had my first primeval essence. Step two in taming my own boss creature eventually. Once back at the base, I placed down my flag and called that the end of the day. Then early hours in the morning, I set up a trap as I wanted a primal orgy. I led it into the trap, placing the door right behind it, I'm and sorry, began the paid. arrow slog into its face. Revealing its tripped out face, so I named him DJ Beak. I then wanted a conflagrant Anki as these guys smelt metal as they're harvesting it. I was flying around on speed and almost died to a random ass Mr. Fisto who was fighting something. Like dang, that was damn close. I found another flaming Anki that I was able to lead into a trap, drank it out and tame it up. And after I got home in the morning, saddling up DJ Beak and the Anki before heading off on a massive metal grind, which was made easy thanks to the speed of the Anki. After I got home, made some of the fancy trank dots, used a gun to change my ramps to stairs, ah, the joys of modded, and set up some decorations in the base, including the bust of Snooples, my saddest death in the Savage Acro 100 days before taking a moment to just lie down in the bath as I contemplated whether I can beat this challenge. Bavor's zipping off to get a loot drop, getting ambushed by a hippo, and having speed fall shortly after to a baryonyx. I guess I should have stayed in the bathtub, but I would get my revenge on this hippo. It had started a fire inside me to not just beat Pugnacia, but to absolutely destroy it. In the morning of day 27, I went out on my conflagrant Anki, speeding all over the mountain like I was the roadrunner, running away from the wily e. coyote. Then after I launched myself home, I parked my Anki, threw out my poison wyvern that I hatched a few days ago as well as throwing out my magmasaur egg to hatch up, before wiping the swamp of all crabs for their polymer. Then day 28 began in the swamp as I needed to help Doggy to get back to their stuff. So while they ran, I simply destroyed everything that got close. This felt like an escort mission from Genesis, but I unfortunately failed as a nameless came up from behind and killed them. I was waiting and ready for round two, but then they showed up back on their trike. So apparently they did get their stuff. Oh well, mission success then, I guess. I then turned to take on a primeval broodmother as if I want to get my own boss, I need to kill at least one of every primeval. And so far, that is only two that I have out of seven. Next step in my plan to get a primeval was to tame a primal griffin. So I went and grabbed myself a harpoon gun, some net projectiles and dino gateways, found a level 812 griffin, net gunned it and simply built my trap around it. Shot two tranks into it to knock it out, named her Spank, and then once I got home I realized she had a monocle, so I renamed her to Madam Spank, and used her to tame a Megachalon so it could farm me rare flowers and rare mushrooms. I started day 29 by taming a terrestrial Draboa, who I named Leafy, before taking on a Primal Trike as its face cannons kept shooting me back, so after taming him up, I named him Cannons McGee and then found a primal stego that I named September Stego, as these are a fantastic tame in Pugnacia. You can cycle through mohawk colors and that will make it so they gather more of that berry top. I found another griffin that I tamed as I wanted an imprinted one. I named him Source Bank and that's when I messed up. I was flying around and saw Mysteriox was fighting a boss. So I stopped by for a bit, just as he happened to kill the boss. Giving me the ascension and the tech grams. Damn it. Oh well, I can't dwell on it. So I took on a dodo wyvern for more essence. Four more to go. I then headed out on my poison wyvern as I planned to recreate Game of Thrones by turning it into a zombie wyvern. But first I needed levels, so I was killing some aloes when in the morning I found a primeval dodo rex and my poison wyvern was dealing torpor. So I led them to a cliff where I was able to just spit on it until its torpor was almost full as I slipped and fell down the cliff. Well, I never died, so I swam around the mountain to run back up, 
shot some arrows into it to finish it off, tamed it up, and it has a super cool cluster bomb attack. And dang, this thing is powerful. So I thought, let's take on this third track boss. I never expected its minion to have over 100 million health. So I ran away, and it fortunately got bored, as that definitely would have killed me. I started day 31 by letting my snails breed so I'd have a bunch to passively give me cementing paste for when I build my base later on. I needed some more electronics so went off on Madam's bank and found this cool cave in the swamp before I came across an easter bunny that I tranked and tamed. Also tamed a giant turtle then flew off to the swamp to start day 32 in search of a conflagrant frog as they double as a chemistry bench so I could make tons of narcotics for more trank darts. After I eventually found one and tranked it out, picked him up and headed home where I named the frog Charmant. Day 33 started as I raced around on Charmant, stealing from beavers and crafted more narcotics in the frog swamp, then flew off to the snow to tame myself a conflagrant mammoth. I wanted one as they're a great source of charcoal to make tons of gunpowder, and then while waiting I just sort of wasted my time killing things around the area collecting some loot drops and messing about when I remembered I could just grab some ghrelin tonics which train the food of creatures. Mammoth was named Flammoth and I then headed home. Day 34 started as I bred Sir and Madam Spank, threw out their egg to hatch and then started breeding my giant turtles. Left the baby griffin to raise up as well as a small giant turtle when one of them starved. Oops. Unfortunately, the other one was still alive so I was able to give it some food to prevent its death and set up a nanny to hopefully prevent any unnecessary baby deaths later on, before using Flammoth to gather a bunch of wood to be burnt into charcoal. Day 35 started and I need to get a move on if I wanted to defeat a boss, so I went off on my Dodo Rex to fight Mr. Fister, but I got my ass handed to me so I again had to run away. I needed something stronger. I needed a Giga with socks. Also known as the Glacial Giga. So I flew off in search of the frozen beast. I found and took down another Dodo Wyvern, as I just couldn't pass up some free energy. Then I came across a primeval Indom, because if I couldn't find a Giga, this is the best option. Easily tranked him out, tamed and trapped him before saddling him back at the base to go on a rampage. As my rampage continued into day 36, killing mechs, skeletals, wyverns, giggers, and more, before going into battle with the third truck. But with such few health potions, I had to bail. So instead, I killed this giant turkey shooting missiles at me. I never realized that Valhalla was in America. But anyway, I found a primeval dragon, and now this thing is the scariest primeval out there. If you don't kill it quick enough, its fire breath will melt you down and kill you. So I hit it like three or four times with my griffin to defeat it and get the next energy. Only three more to go. Phoenix, Indom, and Manticore. Before I will have everything I need to sacrifice the primeval and get my own boss. Except I haven't killed a boss yet. And I have to do all of this before day 50? Let's go. As I was out searching for Giga, I did find a glacial rhino I tamed and named Ringo when I finally came across a level 784 glacial Giga. I could not let myself get too close, else its snowstorm will absolutely delete me. But this is why I wanted Madam Spank, as I could now just chill in the sky and rain down tranks onto it, tamed him up and named him Snowglobe. I saddled up Snowglobe the next day before heading into the desert, picking a fight with everything. Fighting mechs, gigas, brontos, rocket turkeys and wavens. I came across the primal basilisk hiding in the ground and that's when my stream told me. I have to tame one of every primal before the end of the video, so I had to take this opportunity to knock another one off the list. Hopped off Snowglobe and lured the giant snake out the ground, shot it, dodged one glob and shot it again to trank it out. I named him Snack's Revenge and continued out on Snowglobe when I found a third truck boss. Let's do this. Dang, that definitely could have ended badly. 
but now it was time to take on the next one. Mr. Fister was a slightly easier target as he, as he didn't have those goddamn minions getting in my way. And then day 38 started as I needed more crystal for a replicator. So I shot off on the Yankee when I found a Lyra Pluridon, a magical Lyra Pluridon, before finally getting to Candy Mountain, Charlie, I, I'm, I mean Crystal Mountain, gathering a ton of it and then zooming back to base, placing my shiny new replicator and taking out Ringo for a wood collection mission as a snowball launching oversized unicorn gathers thousands of wood like it was nothing. Threw out my magma sword to raise up as I ended the day. As day 39 started, it was kind of dark in my base, so I set up some lights before I found a conflagrant Morella top, and I could use this in combination with my Easter Bunny and an Oviraptor for an automated kibble farm. So I kidnapped an Oviraptor to tame in my base, and then I also found a unicorn who had a cool rainbow flowing out its butt, so I just carried it around with me while I got some crystal, before heading out in search of a female Easter Bunny, when I found Thor's hammer. I couldn't actually pick it up as I obviously was not worthy. And then after the next day started, I finally found a female Easter Bunny to tame up. Set them all up at the base with the hitching post to prevent them wandering off before having a bit of a dance off on the roof of my base. A tribute to a trend that I started on Twitter. So make sure you follow me there as I'll be hosting giveaways there in the future. I wanted another Glacial Giga to breed an imprint, so I found a nearby female that I was able to tame up and name Blizzard Socks. Threw both my Gigas out, let them do the dirty, and then made a bunch of Giga saddles with the blueprint I had from the Upgrade Station mod, which is a super OP mod that I never really used but did for this playthrough as I intend to fight more than just the hippo by the end of this. I plan to fight Jormungandr, a massive world serpent best known for having killed Thor. Varen, a massively powerful Megalania with hundreds of millions of health. And finally, I will be performing a ritual to summon in Destroyer, a devastatingly powerful foe. And with only 60 days left to do all of this, I would have to speed up my plans. I am going to take on Spinebreaker. It was day 41 when I found a Spinebreaker, and it was time to fight. It took over half the day of fighting, snowing, and backing away to finally kill the Spinebreaker. Even snagging myself a fancy pair of Vulcan pants from the fight, now just needed a few bits more of primeval energy, and I would be able to get my very own Spinebreaker. So the next day I shot off in search, killing Megapithecus, Manticore, Dragons, Dodo Wyvern, Phoenix, and Indominus Rex. It was day 43 when I was asked to bear witness to the first ever Titanosaur space program? Titano X? With a very successful launch off the floating island, it flew a solid 40% of the map, making this the first successful flying Titanosaur. Before heading home as it was time to craft the Spinebreaker Sacrifice. Fed it to my Indom, and I now had a Spinebreaker. With cannons on his back, I named him Hippo Atomizer. And my first challenge, Wavan Island. Running straight in for a massive leveling spree, I came across a Mr. Fister that I was able to blast with missiles, drop bubbles of death on, and simply whittle down for an easy kill, giving me all the experience I would need. I even fought the elemental Titanosaur, a boss Titano that rains down volcanic and ice meteors to defeat his foes. And then I started day 44 by fighting Kareem's plant friend. A giant spitting plant launching tons of acidic balls at you. And for whatever reason, it dropped candy like a pinata. And then after that battle, it was time to turn my attention towards Skana. A deadly scorpion boss that deals insane amounts of torpor and damage all in one. What I wasn't expecting was the long range grab as it shouted, get over here. Okay, I managed out, to escape run, just before run, Hippo Atomizer run, got knocked run, unconscious, run. but I was not prepared for that fight yet. I had four more pseudo bosses to defeat before this 100 days was over. Mothra, 
Skarna, Tempest, and the Kraken. So in order to defeat Skarna, I made myself some Acid Thylacoline Tonics to make sure my Spinebreaker never gets knocked out. I needed more crystals, so I saddled up my Magmasaur and went to the volcano, as the Magmasaur is the best crystal gatherer in Pugnacia. I started day 45 by taking on yet another oversized weed, my Thanksgiving dinner, and then moving my attention back to Skarna. When I realized something strange, if you're behind Skarna, it literally won't even attack you. So for what is meant to be a difficult fight, this was surprisingly easy. But I now got a very powerful weapon from that. A toxic spear that can deal Torbor. So I one shot knocked out a tumultuous Kano like it was nothing. And then played around with the cute little Ferox. But I didn't feel like actually taming it. So I tech sprinted away. And then day 46 began with the hunt for Mothra. After having fought a Spinebreaker, that fight was a breeze, I yet again abused the ability to defeat a Skarna without it turning around, before spending the rest of the day hunting Primevals for their souls. As I continued on day 47 with more Primeval killings, third trike fightings, and Mr. Fister massacrings, I found a Seeker that I was able to tame up, as they could be used as a glide suit, which is actually a really cool idea. I also came across a Reaper Queen, gave her some love taps to make her more loving, and when she was ready, grabbed hold of me and impregnated me with her baby. I named my Seeker Cthulhu and then went to fully level up my baby growing inside me. With day 48 starting and 10 minutes left to be ready to hatch my baby, I used the few minutes I had to defeat an elemental titanosaur to ensure I had the maximum possible bonus levels. I shot back to base with 4 minutes to build a birthing chamber as the reaper burst through my chest. Chucked some food into it and left it to raise up while I went on yet another metal harvesting run. The sun rose on day 49 as I tamed a snow owl that I named Owl before getting home and imprinting my reaper and then it was time to reenact the scene from Game of Thrones by equipping the frozen spear. Okay, that didn't work. Made myself some more spears and yet none of them worked. So I had to give up on that idea. And now I had one other task I had to get done. I wanted to finally build my base. So for the rest of the day and until day 51, I spent the days building my workshop tower before taking a moment to simply admire it. It's not ever something that I just take the time to go and do. Then for the second half of day 51 I went out for yet another recovery mission. This time escorting Doggy and Shadow through the desert as mechs, wavens and skeletals all showed up to take me on. This escort mission at least went easier than the first one. And I got home in the morning of day 52 and spent some time to move my teams into the base as well as set up some railings on the roof, building safety and all that. I also started designing the bridge to my base into day 53 and even got architect approved by Mr. Chromater himself. There you go. Oh, I love it. Oh, this satisfies me more than it should. <laughs> I love this so fucking much. I started day 54 by simply admiring my build as I was kind of proud of this so far. I wanted to have this done, so I made a runway landing for flyers on the other side of my base before heading out on my reaper to test him out. But not fighting anything too dangerous as I didn't want to lose my baby. I did like how high he could jump though. And then day 55 was yet more primeval hunting as I wanted another spine breaker. So I needed to kill another one as well. So I headed into battle with the spine breaker for the second time before turning to take out Skarna by simply nipping at his behind. I feel like this could be a really cool fight. Too bad the scorpion is completely bugged out. I finally had enough energy on day 56 to summon in my second spinebreaker, crafted up a mutator, gave them the buff to let them do the dirty, and then in the morning of day 57 I named my reaper John the Ripper, before throwing out my spinebreaker baby to raise up as well as a bunch of baby snails. Set up my grinder to grind all of the loot I had gathered over the days, placed some fridges, and then I started day 58 by imprinting my Spinebreaker babies, placing a tech trough to ensure no more of my dinos starve, and then made a skiff to mess around with and have some fun with the patron on the server. 
The next morning, I set up some decorations in the base. Not sure why I was wasting so much time on the base when I actually have a deadline to keep, but I felt so far ahead that I was happy to spend a few days to make the stream happy with the cool base. Welcome to day 60. Only 40 days to go, I went out to squash yet more bosses as I made myself a plant sacrifice. Not because I wanted to have a plant of my own, but to use as a trophy on my creature that would give them a 3% health regen per second buff, which is insane for my secondary spinebreaker. On my own spinebreaker, I had a Mr. Fister trophy which increases damage by 50%. I came across this beautiful green Indom on day 61, and of course green is the best color, so I had to tame it. Tranked it out, went to fetch myself a satiating nutrient, came back, tamed it up, and headed out again. I now had enough energy and resources for what I need, and then made myself the Ascension Boss Arena. Before heading out to the desert with my army, I named them Hippo Fractionizer, Hippo Massacrer, and Jess. So for day 62, I took out my small squad of death spiners to level up killing Gigas, Wyverns, and more. When I was swimming back to fight a tempest I had seen, when I lost some of my spine breakers as they just went flying out of the water. I searched and searched, but I could not find Jess anywhere. So there was a bounty of 10,000 metal ingots to find Jess, but she was never found. The tempest I wanted to kill was just gone, so I called that the end of the day. After the brood yeah, mother fight, it was time to turn my eyes to the next boss. The Ascendant Megapithecus. And as I brought down that oversized gorilla, which actually was an easier fight than the Broodmother, even though it did hit like a truck, I then had the dumbest idea for the rest of day 64. I planned to find the fastest creature in Pugnasia. So I tamed a Diplo and a Titanosaur when I came across another Dripbob Ross, who I tamed and named Zany Zebra 2.0. I even gave him a small canvas where he could work on his thumbnail, so we'll check on him later. I also gave my armor a nice fresh coat of paint. And then early on in the morning of the next day, I checked in on Zany to see the progress of his thumbnail, but it looked like he still has a long way to go. And I got back to my Ascension Arena and it was time to fight Ascension boss number three, the Ascendant Dragon. After that battle, I spent the rest of the day trying to complete my silly quest looking for the fastest creature. So I put as many movement speed levels into my Diplo as I could, making the speed machine, even launching us out of the water flying through the sky. Now as the sun was rising, it was time to bring on the Ascendant Manticore. After that battle, which thankfully none of my creatures ended up getting knocked out, I got home and set up myself a cloning chamber, 
but the spine breaker was going to cost 3 million shards and I simply could not afford that. I also had some fun with Shadow and Doggy trapping them in cages and then when I wasn't paying attention they managed to cage me back. Damn, now I need to find a way out of this. I tried using chairs, foundations, other cages and even a teleporter. And then when finally it was day 67 I had a great idea. I placed down a bed slightly outside of the cage and then placed one inside and then I just fast traveled out grab my loot before running away from my captors and then throwing out some spine breakers to raise up. I started day 68 by doing some more decorating in the base and even setting up a mirror where I had a dance off against myself in the mirror just for fun. I then played around with Grover Forbit who is amazingly still alive, my very first tame, and day 69, ah, nice began in the most amazing way by launching the into the air on my diplo flying through the sky like a rocket and then heading out on john the ripper my reaper when i walked into doggy's base and found that grover had been taken captive so i managed to rescue him and headed home and day 70 began with saddling up my titanosaur and just pumping movement speed to make it as fast as possible at just 4,700% movement speed, I was already launched into, into the sky. I now had 8,400% movement and was absolutely rocketing through the sky. I named him Doop Doop before absolutely launching across the sky like a giant oversized living space shuttle. Day 71, I headed out to prepare for the final boss, the Ascendant Hippo. I first, however, needed to level up more spine breakers as this hippo is no joke. So leading my squad Can't in, we anything. went in to fight an elemental titanosaur. And I accidentally lost the spine breaker. So for extra damage, I brought out snow globe and blizzard socks. I came across a kraken in the early hours of day 72 that I was able to take out quickly and efficiently underwater before spotting a tempest hanging out on the shores. So I charged it into battle and took it down. As day 73 rose, I looked into what I needed to craft the Mega Mech Operational Materialization Interface. And all I needed was another Spine Breaker Spine and the Cracked Hippo Tooth. So I needed to fight the Hippo, as I would need that Mega Mech for when I summon in Destroyer on day 100. I placed the Ascension Arena as I summoned in the Ascendant Hippo. It was a long fight, but I eventually won. So I had now beaten Pugnacia, but the challenge was not over yet. I now have barely 26 days to defeat Jorman Gondor, Varen, and Destroyer. So I punched my way home with my tech gauntlets and using Cthulhu to glide until I got home. In order to craft the Mega Mech, I needed to get three mini mechs, so I needed more crystal. Heading out on my Magmasaur for a huge crystal gathering mission for the entirety of day 74. And then day 75 I had the greatest idea to complete my side quest of finding the fastest Pugnacia creature. I tamed myself an Astro Cetus, saddled it up and started pumping movement speed. 16,000%? Yes please! I was the fastest whale in the sky when I was challenged to a race. Titano X versus Astro Cetus. He stood no chance as I launched in Mark 69 speed, going so fast it broke the camera perspective. I named it Astro Speedus, a suggestion from Chaotic and I felt it was fitting. And as the races continued on day 76 and having officially beaten all my opponents, I checked what I needed for the mech. 
and saw I was short of element shard and oil, so went hunting for some bacillos to end of the day. I was gliding out and about on day 77 when I saw him for the very first time. Varen. He turned to face me and I was not ready to face him just yet. I tried to launch some missiles but he was too strong. I had to run. I needed the mega mech, so I needed shards. Crafted a ton of elements into shards before crafting my first mech on day 78. Thankfully in Pugnacia you can clone the mechs. Who knew? So I cloned my mech a few times to ensure I had backups and for the final step to get my mega mech was to kill yet another spinebreaker for its spine. And then it was day 79 as I spawned into a mega mech for the very first time. Let's put this baby to the test. That elemental titanosaur was nothing. I christened the mega mech N4 TUR the 4L C4 U235. And then I gave the N40 a much needed paint job before heading off in search of the Varen. It was day 80 when I finally found him. Varen, the ultimate lizard king. The fight went much better than expected. So I went out to test the N4T against the Ascension bosses. It was a piece of cake. Even Spinebreaker was just an ant compared to the N4T. And day 81 I continued just massacring everything from Skarna, a Reaper Queen and the Elemental Titanosaur. I started day 82 and wanted another Mega Mech. So I had to kill another Tempest in order to get its circuit board. So I cloned a bunch of mechs and then stepped into my brand new Mega Mech. The CH4071 CG4M1N6. Crafted some missiles which turned out to be useless. Then I flew off on day 83 to check out Protoraxis base which was looking pretty awesome so far. Before coming home and giving the CH40 a glorious new paint job. Day 84 began by using the CH40 to take out an elemental titanosaur for levels and then heading out on Madame Spank to find a world serpent. When it found me and instantly killed Madame Spank. One issue, that was just a baby. Be somewhere here. So using the CH-40 I is. was able to get back to my stuff and, de and defeat the baby the world serpent. It. But now I had to find the adult. Day 85 I ended up fighting a Spinebreaker and a Tempest all at once. Which gave me the final Vulcan pieces I needed. Got home painted it all up and even gave Cthulhu a fresh new skin. Threw out a ton of spine breakers as I would need an army for destroyer. And I spent day 86 by doing the full ascension arena again like a piece of cake as I wanted another Hippotooth to make a third mega mech. Then day 87 I was about to lead a Mothra down to be killed by my mega mech when a corrupted fire oven ruined my day after I got back and led the Mothra down to kill it before I headed home to get back on day 88. I then spent the day running through the desert, killing things for fun, and yeah, not much else was done these days as I was still looking for the true world serpent. I had to kill another Kraken for my third Mega Mech as well as a Mothra before absolutely destroying a forest as I searched for the world serpent to end off day 89. The final countdown, doo -doo -doo -doo. only 10 days to go and I really do appreciate you watching this far. If you did, comment something about fried oranges down below so we can confuse everyone who skipped this part. So for the morning I ended up taming one of those dubstep penguins who I named Kairuku Ops as well as taming a Thala I named Kitty Colio. Before summoning in my third and final Mega Mech I would be needing all of these as backups to help me fight the World Serpent and Destroyer. I gave the Mega Mech a paint job before naming it the 4RKR 4K70R. And then as I started out on day 91, I picked up my Mega Mech as that's apparently a thing in Pugnacia before heading off to where I had been told that the World Serpent was sighted. So leading my CH40 and riding my N40, I went over to the spot. I could only spot the world serpent on day 92 
and now I just had to lead him out of his hole. I tried luring it with myself, my mechs, a glacial carbo I named Sharkbait, before finally I got it out, Jormungandor, the world serpent. And finally, as I defeated that snake, I came across a prodigious Jaboa that I was able to tame before pumping movement speed as one final attempt to find a creature faster than Astro Speeders. Three, two, one, launch. Oh, now this is one fast Jabuska. I needed to make more spine breakers on day 93, but for that, I needed more silica pearls. So I went out and tamed a primal dunkly before using it to harvest a bunch of pearls. Then the morning of day 94, I bred up a ton more spine breakers as I would need them for the final boss fight. Then from day 95 until day 99, I was preparing by breeding an army of spine breakers and building up the summoning station for destroyer, as I would be using all my spine breakers and all my mega mix, with the spine breakers all named after my patrons. I really do appreciate all the support from all of you. Welcome to day 100. A huge thank you to all of you for the support before standing at the altar as I summoned in Destroyer. What? Wait, wait a minute. That's just the Noglin. Oh, my bad. Summoning scroll was upside down. It was now time to summon in Destroyer. There's the deaths. <laughs> In 900. <laughs> Dude, that mech's gone. That mech. I don't know, but that bitch just got Thanos snapped. Oh, so did I. <laughs> so, so oh, did shit. I. So did I. I was just. Take <laughs> yeah. <Right> with us. <laughs> they just get you. Dodge the laser. <laughs> Oh, there goes all the spine rig. There goes more. Oh, that that's Mega Mech down. Dude, Where are you? I'm, I'm in the mech. The normal mech. Press the P. Two IP. Oh, there goes that mech. And this tiny little dude riding it. Jeez, he's doing deep damage. That's the perfect giga. Get gigas. Oh no, it's just a matter of. Like he had level 1. Uh, thank you all for watching i really do appreciate it and i hope you all stay fan freaking tastic see you guys next time bye